Hi, I'm Sean McGowan. In this lesson, we're going to focus on melody. When written in fake books or charts, jazz melodies are typically notated very simply, without much direction in the way of articulations or rhythmic variations. They're really intended to be more of a blueprint than a building. Although it is important to refrain from altering a melody by drastically changing its pitches, we can certainly apply rhythmic concepts and other personal approaches to bring melodies to life and help make them swing. Let's take a look at some of these approaches and how you can bring them into any jazz arrangement of a well-known melody. A syncopated phrase is one that features several notes, accented or not, played on upbeats in one or more measures. Syncopation adds a rhythmic drive to the melody, a sense of strong forward motion that helps the song to swing when performed in a jazz style. There are a few simple ways of creating syncopation within a melody. One is to incorporate anticipated notes, notes that are played slightly earlier than normal. Here's an unadorned melody written straight with no rhythmic syncopation or phrasing. One, two, three, and... Now here's that same melody with some jazz syncopation. It features all of the same pitches, but some of the notes are anticipated by a half beat. One, two, three, four. Note how much more animated the second example sounds than the first. Just as we can anticipate notes by playing them early, we can also delay notes by playing them later than written. These delayed attacks also occur on the upbeats. One, two, three, four. Delayed notes are often combined with anticipations, as in the second measure of this example. Get some more practice by writing out a basic melody that you already know and then applying these two devices. With a little practice, you'll soon be comfortable enough to use them naturally, whether you're reading a melody or improvising a solo. Guitar techniques like slides, hammer-ons, and pull-offs can also help to articulate melodies in different ways. Here's our melody again, this time with anticipations and delayed attacks, along with some articulation techniques for additional color. One, two, three, and... The first measure of this figure includes a grace note on the end of beat three, written as a slide, but you can also try playing it with a quick pull-off for a slightly different sound. The end of the second measure features a little melodic ornament, sometimes called a turn. The two original melody notes are A and G, and the turn adds a little spin on the A by quickly bouncing off the notes B flat and F. Now that we know a few tricks to bring a melody to life, let's add some chords underneath so we can start to build solo arrangements. Typically, the melody note will be the highest note in a chord voicing because it needs to be prominently featured and always audible. Here's our melody again, placed on top of some guide tone voicings. One, two, three, and... And here it is again, harmonized with some drop two voicings. In this example, I'm raising the melody by an octave to ensure that it isn't buried by the chord voicing. Solo guitarists and pianists often play melodies over a bass line to create counterpoint figures, which are basically what we get when we have two or more melodic lines moving in similar or contrary motion, implying a harmonic progression without actually playing chords. Here's our melody over a bass line in two. One, two, three, and... Now here it is over a walking four bass line. A one, two, three, and... Here's a more traditional counterpoint figure in that the two lines are closer together and the lower line is not as low as a bass line would typically sound. 
I'm also going to play this in straight four so you can really focus on the notes. One and two and three and four and. <laughs> When creating lines to accompany a melody, simply choose notes from the chord's underlying scale and add some motion when the melody pauses. This is a great way to create question and answer type of figures, like our next example. One, two, three, and... Think simple. A little can go a long way, and you don't ever want to clutter or crowd out the melody. Now let's work through a short etude that uses all of these melodic, rhythmic, and accompaniment strategies. I'm going to play a 12-bar melody I've titled Spring in Omaha two different ways. First, here's how it would probably sound if played exactly as written in a fake book. One, two, three, and... Play through that once or twice before trying the second version, which includes some of the rhythmic shifting, harmonization, and counterpoint techniques that we've discussed in this lesson. Watch for the anticipated notes in measures 2, 5, and 10, delayed attacks with the chords in measures uh, 7 and 13, and some cool counterpoint textures in measures 1 through 4. 1, 2, 3, and... Thanks again for joining me for this lesson. For more fingerstyle jazz guitar instruction, check out the rest of my fingerstyle jazz guitar essentials lessons, available at AcousticGuitar.com. For Acoustic Guitar, I'm Sean McGowan.